Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergaga.com. And in this video, we are going to look at how to reference workbooks in Excel VBA. Now for this example, we're going to focus on how we can open, save and close different workbooks in VBA. And we'll look at a few different techniques in how to work with them. Now in this video, we are only going to be able to go to a certain level of detail. So in the description of this video, there is a link where you can enroll in the complete Excel VBA course and you can find more detail there. For this video, I just wanna focus on typical ways that we can reference workbooks. And for this example, I have this workbook on screen with just one sheet and the sales of five products for September. Keeping this example nice and simple so that we can focus on the code. What I also have open, if I just switch windows here, is a file called 2019. And in here is all the month sales. And what we want to do is copy and paste the information from the September sales workbook to the bottom of the 2019 workbook. Now I'm going to close the 2019 workbook down and we're going to run it from this one. So some of the things we're going to have to focus on in this code is first of all how to open the other workbook, the one called 2019, because it's currently closed. But then once it's open, we'll need to come back to this workbook to be able to copy the range of sales on screen and paste it to the one we've just opened and then save and close that one. And that is our scenario. So let's get cracking with that. And I'll switch into the Visual Basic Editor. Developer tab, Visual Basic. And this is what I've got at the moment. I'm putting this macro into my personal workbook. And you can see it in the top left there in the Project Explorer, my update sales module. That's where this code currently is, which backs up the scenario of receiving this data on email. I don't want to put the macro in a workbook. It needs to be in the personal macro workbook, so it's available to me at all times. I've just got some basic code in here at the moment. I've got the file path of that file that I just showed, which has all the month's sales data. I've got a variable called file path, and that has been assigned to it. So it just saves me a little bit of typing and I don't have to worry about that, that file path, which we already know and is always the same in this scenario. I also have a little message box to finish off. Now let's focus on what we want to do. So this is the file path of the big 2019 file and I want to copy and paste the data from the current month sales to the bottom of that. So at the top here, I'm going to declare a workbook variable, and I'm simply going to call it WBK. You can call it whatever you want, but that's quite a common name for it, either WB or WBK. I could be more specific if I have multiple workbook variables. And I'm going to use that variable for the currently open workbook. So underneath my file path here, I'm going to put set WBK equals the active workbook. So the current workbook I've got open, if I just minimize this for a moment, is the current month sales. And I'm going to assign that to that variable WBK. If I come back into my editor now, so that when we do the copy operation, which you'll see shortly, I don't have to worry about writing in the name of that file because that may change every month. It's come via email, I don't know what its name is. By setting up this variable, I simply won't need to. The workbook that you're running it from. So active workbook, not to be mistaken for the this workbook object. So this workbook is the workbook where the macro is stored. And we're not gonna use that here because we're not storing our code in a workbook that we care about referencing. It's in the personal macro workbook. But active workbook is the one that's currently active, that you're actually in, you've got a cell selected, you're working on. And that currently is this September sales. 
So once that's set, we can now look at opening the other workbook. So for this, we're going to do workbooks dot open. Using the workbooks object, we're going to open up another workbook. They're going to prompt me for what this workbook is. And I'm going to use my variable file path. Open up that workbook that we have specified in a string. Because it's always the same name, same place. Once you're in here, just going to quickly write some code to do the copy and paste operation. We're going to have range A2. Dot end, Excel down. That is not what I wanted to type. Let's change that to end. Uh, dot offset, one comma zero, dot select. In the currently open workbook, it's jumping to the first vacant cell at the bottom of it. Now, how do I know what the currently open workbook is? I know because I just opened it. And as soon as you open a workbook, that becomes the active one. So it's very important that lines of code are in this order. We assign the WBK variable with the active one. Then we open the other one, which makes that active. Go to the bottom of that list. And now I need to copy and paste. Now what that means is I need to refer back to the other workbook. And that might be quite complex. But for us right now, no it's not. It's just WBK. Because we went to the effort of assigning that variable at the start makes it very easy to refer to at any point in their code now. I don't have to remember where that might be saved if I close it or even if it's open, like what's it called? So WBK sheet one, just gonna use an index number to reference the first sheet. For simplicity, we'll just imagine the data is always on the first sheet. Range, we'll also imagine it's always five products here. Let's keep our example simple. So it's A2 to C6, avoiding the headers there, dot copy, copy method, copy and paste. And then after our copy, I'm going to put a destination, because you can copy and paste all within one statement. Colon equals, and that is going to be active cell. Because of the previous step where I selected the first cell at the bottom, that's now the active one. So I can easily reference back to the other workbook and copy and paste into there. What's left for us now is to save and close the active workbook. So I can just put active workbook dot save, active workbook dot close. And that will save and close the active one, which is the 2019 file. So in this video, we've seen a few different ways of referring to a workbook. We've got a variable set up, so you can refer to the current month cell simply as WBK. So when we open up others, it's easy to go out to refer to. We've used active workbook a few times. And we've also got the actual name of the file. Now that's written as a string in the variable here. But when we're doing things such as set WBK equals, at that point, you could just be writing workbooks and actually specifying its name in there. It could be 2019.xlsx. And sometimes you'll be doing that. You'll know the name of it. You're saying, look, assign that to the variable, and then you know what I'm talking about, and I won't have to write this name in every single time. For us, though, that's not the case. It is the active workbook at that point. So these different techniques for referencing can come in handy in different scenarios. There's no set rule. It depends on the, the order and what your macro is doing. Now we need to see this in action. So if I click my run button up on the toolbar here, that has successfully done its job and I get my message telling me that the sales data has been successfully archived. If I click on that and maybe I'll minimize and just go and open that 2019 workbook because you can see here if I go to switch windows that it was successfully closed Let me file open 2019 and Here it is with the September information successfully appended to the bottom Excellent stuff now. Let me close that back down again and come back into the visual basic code because 
That obviously worked and was excellent. And we gave it a specific path to the file. But maybe you won't always know the exact name of it or you can't trust the name of it because people may change it or move its location. So instead of using this string assigned to file path, these absolute path, if I just comment that out for the apostrophe, and I don't need the variable at the top either, but I'll leave that there. And instead of using that string variable, I'm going to enter application dot get open file name. Now this method is brilliant. This will open the open dialog, something that users are quite familiar with and they can navigate and they can select the file and then that will be opened with workbooks to open. So rather than giving a string, the user can go and select it. So there's no right or wrong here. By providing a string like the previous example, it saves the effort of the user having to go and do that. However, it's more vulnerable to people changing things and issues. Whereas if I get them to select it, it's much safer, but I am asking the user to do some manual tasks. Now there are some quite interesting things you can do to the get open file name method, but I'm not going to go into that for now. It's just a quick demonstration. So if I now go and run this code again, here is the open dialog box. I can navigate to my desktop, into the sales folder. There's 2019, open it up and it runs the code and gives me the message. And if I was to minimize this and go and open the 2019 file again, we now have September twice, which is a little bit silly, but it did show the macro working perfectly. And that time we had the open dialogue, so the user was able to go in and actually select it themselves. So if I close that down, one last thing I do want to just quickly mention in the code, which is absolutely fine, but where we've got active workbook.save, active workbook.close, doing it in two different steps, just like you might when you're using Excel, I could ignore that save step and on active workbook.close, there is an argument to save changes. So I could put save changes colon equals true and I can save and close it in one line there just like uh, you might when you're using Excel yourself and you go and close it down prompts you for saving changes and you go ahead and do it I hope you found this video useful please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com